Hello everyone and welcome to 5 Games 5 Minutes from www.aconelectron.co.uk Spy Snatcher is the last professionally released text adventure for the Electron from Topologica, a software house dedicated to publishing those type of games. You're a private detective who has been drafted into MI7 to try and unmask a mole. MI7, it seems, are fairly sure that last night someone photographed the plans of something called the Sonic Macro Thorod Duel. You move around with the standard North, South, East, West commands, and a ticking clock on screen increases by one minute each time you make a move. You get both very detailed mission briefings and detailed location descriptions once you start to wander. In the original Corridors of Power, venturing downstairs and into many of the rooms leads to someone discovering your presence. This is apparently very bad. Your mission is so secret that not even the overzealous security guard must know you are there. Now I haven't got very far in Spy Snatcher myself, but it's clearly a big, intricate beast. It's for an electron with plus four disc DFS interface only. Perplexity is a respected maze game from Ian Collinson and was released on the Superior Acorn Soft range. It's best described as a colourful 3D maze game and one requiring great feats of brain power and dexterity. To win, you have to collect all the diamonds in the maze. Some diamonds are just lying around, but others are encased inside boulders. To get them out, all you need to do is to push two boulders together. What makes this difficult, however, is that the maze walls, doors and patrolling inhabitants tend to obstruct clear paths between one boulder and another. The 3D perspective also takes a bit of getting used to, making false moves even easier to perform than might be the case in 2D. Not all boulders will reveal diamonds, too. Some give you time potions or horrible key swap penalties. You're not under any obligation to collect these, but if they're obstructing a diamond, then of course you haven't really got much choice. Black boulders just get in your way. This is a game for people who love good variations on seasoned ideas. It's all put together beautifully, despite being immeasurably frustrating. On top of everything else, later levels also switch the palette for more disorienting gameplay. But it has passwords, making it a difficult but not impossible challenge. Positron is a raw-looking zap -em up game, written by Gary Partis. You take the controls of a single craft and have to blast your way through nine waves of invaders. The instructions tell you that, quote, only the quickest can survive, unquote. And they're really not kidding. This is seriously fast stuff. Best tactics are to immediately try to get to the edge of the invading pack and try and pick off the stragglers. Eventually, you'll come down to a mano -y mano deathmatch with the final one, and either you'll blast him, or he'll blast you. Although it may look pretty hard if you're watching someone else play, Positron actually handles very well. There isn't a lot of variety though. The formation aliens on Wave 1 are replaced by swarms on all the other levels, and all that really seems to change on the subsequent waves is the sprite. Even when you blast the mothership on the final level, you just return to the beginning again, without any real increase in difficulty. Snooker from Vision Software describes itself as a load of balls. Its instructions then proceed into irrelevant and immature ranting. You've got to read them to believe them. The game itself is also awful. In fact, it's so bad that again you have to see it to believe it. You get a snooker table with 15 red balls and a crosshair which you position in order to aim. When you're ready to take a shot, you press and hold down space to increase power. When you release, the cue ball fires towards the crosshair. It's at this point that it all goes so wrong. The balls behave sort of as if they're connected to each other by elastic. Your perfectly aimed shot that couldn't fail to pocket a ball in real life instead ends up sending the ball bouncing the whole length and breadth of the table before coming back and smacking the same cue ball again the whole length and breadth of the table as well. Perhaps if you've never played snooker for real you could just about persevere with this. Just. Kansas City Software strikes again with Snake, an arcade game, although I use that phrase in its loosest sense, in which you must eat different coloured asterisks to progress through the levels. And yes, it definitely deserves the famous buzzer. We've got a playing area here which is barren, empty and completely featureless. The sprites are 8x8 character designs. The control keys are zany and the premise is as bland as a school cardigan. There are no instructions, so the first time that you play you just have to eat the red asterisks and hope for the best. As you eat one of the red ones, a purple one appears. You can eat these too. So you do. 
Right. On the next level, eating the purple ones produces a green one. These ones, though, are inexplicably poisonous and have to be avoided, but you have to die to find that out. You have the usual don't bite yourself or hit the side of the screen rules, of course, but frankly, I suspect you'd have to have gone completely mad to want to play this piffle.